Hey, welcome back to another video. I know what you're thinking. 1200D Pro, it's gonna be pretty sweet. I know there's probably been a million videos about the 1200D Pro out on the internet already, but I felt like I wanted to bring something a little different to the table that I hope you haven't seen before and maybe a use case for this light that you haven't thought of or you have, and maybe I'll just give you a different perspective on this light. Before I start, one disclaimer, Aperture is not paying me to do this review, they never have. Although I do have affiliate links in the description below. Please, if you could click on those, if you're gonna buy one of these lights, it would really help out my channel because I do get a commission on that. But if you don't want the light, totally understandable. So let's get into it. So the first thing you're gonna notice with this light is it's stupid bright. Oh gosh, ah, it's so bright. Oh. It's very bright. You gotta know this light is not light. It is, it is fairly large, pretty heavy. Now compared to like uh, M18 or a Joker or something like that, eh, that's about the same size, but not quite as heavy, I don't think. But I have a junior pin, not a baby pin, which means it has to go on a combo stand or something like it, something that has a junior pin receptor. So a lot of the stands that you use, if you have the 600D or the 300D, all of those, your stands would all be baby pin, which we're all very familiar with. This little guy here, I don't know if you can see that. It is, it's a little bit more of an investment. Combo stands are a little bit more expensive between 200 and 500 bucks, somewhere in there. Also, the 1200D has this very large ballast. It's also fairly heavy, pretty big, but not too bad. It connects nicely to the same connector as before, which is awesome. They did give you a lot more head feeder on this one. So your cable from like the ballast or the power to the light is longer. I think it's like 25 feet now, so that's nice. When Hollywood's using, they usually go bigger light further away. If you can have a bigger light further away, you then maximize what is called the inverse square law, which has a bunch of math to it. But basically what happens is every time you double the distance of your light, you're dropping two stops of light or you're dropping your light in half. For example, if I'm at two feet and my light's here and I'm at a five, six, if I walk to four feet, my f-stop is now an 11. When you're having actors walk around big sets, it limits how much movement they can have when the light is close. Versus if you move the light way away, say the light is 64 feet away, you have a whole 32 feet of walking before you go up two stops. You can walk 16 feet and still be within a stop. So I have a big light over here. My hand gets much brighter as I move it closer than when I move it farther away bright over here, darker over here. And all I'm doing is moving it towards and away from the light source. And the light source is probably six feet away from me, maybe. When you're talking about that inverse square law, you're gonna want a bigger light so you can have more power and bigger spread over a larger area. So that's one of the things I wanna talk about. I wanna talk about using this light for a night exterior, a day interior, a day exterior, see if you can fight the sun. And then what I'm getting into and the biggest piece of what I'm doing and using this light for is slow motion. And I'm talking using the Phantom at a thousand frames per second. Like, can this light get you enough light to do some shots with that? Now with the 1200D Pro, it does come with a case like this that has three different lenses in it a wide, medium, and narrow. If you've used the HMIs before, they're just basically your lenses, how wide the light spreads versus how much it's spotted. So it's allowing you to kind of spot the lens, which is really nice. Right now I'm using the narrow to be able to just hone in as much light as possible. And then what I'll do is I'll switch out the 1200D for the 600D, and then we'll see how it looks. When I turn on this Phantom, the, uh, the fan's gonna get loud. Yep, like that. Because typically when you're shooting slow motion, you're not shooting audio, so especially at a thousand frames a second. As our subject today, a little <laughs> measuring cup of Legos, because, you know, why not? The other major thing ab about the 1200D that is really important is on the ballast, you can actually set it to high speed mode. So if you turn high speed mode on, it reduces any flicker that the light would possibly have. Now with the 600D Pro, it doesn't have that feature, but I haven't noticed any flicker with the 600D with the uh, Phantom. So once you set it in that mode, 
it restricts you to 50% up to 100. So you can't go below 50% in this mode. Not that you would really need to because you're using it for high frame rates anyway. The settings on the Phantom right now, I have 1,001 frames per second at 4K. My shutter's at 180. My ISO is at 800. Okay, so all I gotta do is I dump this, hit the button, and then see how it looks. So I'm at an F8 on my lens. I'm on a 100 millimeter macro, so you can see, oh, I nailed it on that one. But even like these that are just barely out, they get out of focus really quickly. And there's some in focus right there. So I, I kind of hit the, the right spot as the Legos kind of bounce in. But you can kind of see, I have some decent depth, but it goes shallow really quick because when you're on macro, and high speed, you want as deep a focus as you possibly can get. Now I might be able to go down like another stop. Actually, why don't we go kind of dark F16. It, it'll be underexposed by two stops, but we'll see like I, this camera, you can pull up quite a bit out of post. So just to see the depth of field difference. Yeah, see how much more the Legos are in focus now? Like at that F16, you've got way more depth of field. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch out the 1200 for the 600, but I'll put the narrow beam adapter on the 600. All right, so I'm gonna do this twice. I have my 600D set up with the reflector. It looks like I'm gonna need to be around a 5.6. Let's give it a shot. So that's all, in, and then boom, it's out of focus, just like that. I'm actually kind of surprised at how well the 600D held up. Now granted, I'm at a 5.6. So between the 600D and 1200D, what I'm noticing is about a stop, a stop difference total. With the 1200D, I was at an eight, and that was properly exposed. With the 600D, I'm at a 5.6. So one stop difference so far. Now I'm gonna switch the reflector and see what the standard reflector gives me. I switched out for the standard reflector and this lens only opens up to a 3.5 and that's just barely exposed. I would probably say lean a little more towards a 2.8. So that's a whole stop difference between using this reflector and the narrow beam reflector. Now Aperture does sell these separate. So if you want to use a 600D with these reflector set, they do have on their site, you can buy them separately, which is Actually kind of cool, because you could use them with any of their lights and it'll help the punch on your light. Now it will make obviously a very hot spot in the middle of the light. As you can see, this one spread a lot more. Maybe you can't, but it is spread a lot more versus seeing like that hot spot in the middle on the frame. So yeah, that's kind of, uh, that's kind of my first test with the 1200D. You can kind of see, you can do a lot with the 600D, but getting that extra light allows you to have a lot more creative freedom in terms of getting that depth of field to be deeper when you're doing slow motion. So it's not everything super shallow. There's, there's something when you're doing product photography that you want the whole product to be sharp and in focus. You don't want it to be shallow and, and it shows higher production value when it's not shallow. So yeah, that's, this is a very specialized, obviously portion of it, but I mean, a lot of cameras nowadays even shoot 240 any upwards of like 240 or up to 400 if you have like a red, which, you know, it, you do have cases that you'll need that much light. And then if you have the chance of using a Phantom or something, having that much light really just makes all the difference. And honestly, if you're shooting more than just tabletop, you're gonna need more than just a 1200D. You're gonna need a bigger light. Anyway, let's move on to another test and check that out. So light coming directly from the window, shining directly on our model here. And then over here, I have this fog machine to kind of help give it some atmosphere, a little bit of texture, but I wanted to kind of shoot it a ways back over here. So you kind of have this almost morning light kind of feeling. You can kind of see what it looks like here without any lights. And we're gonna turn on the light with just the bare bulb and see what we get. So now when I turn on the light, you can see how bright the whole place gets. The interesting thing is, is the window is blown out the whole time. Once we put the 1200D on, stop down so we get her skin tone about right. Voila, now we can see out the window. Also gives a little bit more of a dynamic look. Definitely darkens in here in our uh, bathroom. Yeah, you can see the difference here. If we come around, that light is just beaming through the window to the point we can't see anything. And our model is just being bathed in light. <laughs> yeah, it 
looks awesome. All right, and then I'm gonna just put some diffusion on it and we'll see the difference there. Okay, so now we're back to our baseline and now I'm going to turn on the light and that is giving us a little softer look, not quite as harsh. So you can kind of see how soft it is here as we come around. And obviously it's blown out. Probably stop down just a little more, get a little bit of that. Then you see the dome. <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of the look. And then the dome is right there. It's the 150 dome and the light's at 100%. So if this was a 600D, let's see what that would look like. So that's a 600D, 1200D. 600, see with the 600, I start losing that outside fence in the back versus the 1200. Brings it up just enough to basically barely save it, which is kind of incredible. That's the 600D right there versus 1200. 600, 1200. This is a very common situation that you find yourself in. You got a massive bright sun. You're your actor's trying to look at the camera as, as you can tell it's squinting like crazy it looks terrible what i'm going to do is use the 1200d move over into some shade see if the 1200d can fight that background brightness of the houses and stuff behind me so let's let's give that a shot to make this easier i brought in caleb as a stand-in right yeah right okay good so now what we do is we have um our setup with the light diffusion and caleb and we're gonna see how dark it is. And you can see I've exposed for the background, but if I expose for Caleb, the background's now blown out. So in order to combat that background, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop it back down. We're going to fire up the aperture at 100%, and then we're going to kind of adjust our ring to match. And so you can kind of see that the 1200D does do about just enough to, to compete. Now, obviously I have some like light streaks on his face and stuff. So now to show you what the 600D would be because the 600D is 50% of the 1200 and that's the 600D right there. And it actually does a decent job, but that background starts getting a lot more blown out. So the extra light from the 1200 is actually incredibly helpful. And you can kind of see at 100% what we're looking at. But this is a pretty typical setup of like doing an interview outside, not having enough light, or being out into the hot sun. So if we move Caleb out into the hot sun, we can take a look at how that looks. So let's, let's do that, Caleb. Let's move you out into the sun. So he's squinting like crazy. So the other option we have is to actually just use the sun and diffuse it. And a lot of times people will do this. So we've diffused the sun, but the problem is like his exposure is still off quite a bit. So what we're gonna do, see if our 1200D help us combat that a little bit. So here's with just the sun. You can see Caleb, he looks, looks real nice. Now, if we do the 1200D, <laughs> but now he's squinting almost as much as he did with the sun, right, Caleb? Yeah. Now, another thing you can do is actually keep the diffusion there and then use a softbox to kind of just accentuate the light. So let's do that. So now you have just a very soft, subtle, change. Caleb, is that as hurtful on your eyes? No, not at all. You could stand there for a while and not have a problem. So here's with it off. So you can kind of see how harsh the shadows are and stuff. And here's with it on. I, we're using this diffusion to stop the sun, to get him some shade to help his eyes. So the sun is actually working more as a fill over on this side of his face. Um, and it's all just one light using the sun, uh, using this lovely reflector or di diffusion here really small frame of diffusion. I mean, typically I would use a much bigger frame, but this is all I had right now. So yeah, that's kind of uh, the outdoor look. It actually actually works really well. Anyway, let's, uh, let's move on to the next setup. I wouldn't normally film an exterior night scene like this with the light shooting directly on the actor. Typically I'd want to backlight it. Unfortunately, I don't have a tall enough stand to put it anywhere. Like you'd want to put this light up really high. So that's why we're lighting it this way. This is with the 1200D on full blast. It's probably a good, oh, 7,500 feet away. Okay, so here's our setup. You can see cameras here, pointing back that way. And then our light is all the way back up there. So you see, how far away it is from everything else and kind of the look it gives you. So to give you some perspective right now, I'm at 100% on the light. My camera is at 400 ISO and it's stopped down to a four. 
I could walk all the way back here and be pretty well exposed back here as when I walk up forward to even all the way to here. Now, if I move the light back further, you probably get a little bit even more than that. And that's the beauty of this light is the inverse square law. You move your light further away, you have more space for your actors to move without getting blown out by the light. So let's see, this is half of, of the uh, output, which would be a 600D. So this is about what a 600D would give you in terms of light output in comparison to the full 1200D output. So kind of give you a kind of an idea of the light and how much it's, it's producing. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, I would highly recommend the 1200D if you're using it, if you're planning on using it for bigger, wider productions. 600D actually does most of the job that you'll need. If you're doing this for interviews, this thing's a little bit of an overkill. I would go with 600D because you can still dim down the 600D or bounce it. So right here, even the light I have here, I'm doing one 600D bouncing off an eight by ultra bounce through a magic cloth. And then, so it's a nice book light just covering up my face. And that's, that's basically it. And then backlight over there that, you know, that's, that's the lighting. So that 600, that 600 D back there is at hundred percent. So, and I'm at like a five, six, unless you want to fight the sun. If you want to fight the sun, thanks again for watching. I appreciate it. I have affiliate links for aperture products in the description below. If you're interested in buying some, please use that link. That would help me out a lot. And uh, I appreciate you watching. Thanks so much, everybody.